Today, I'll be walking you through the major things that you need to do in order to ensure a smooth endgame experience in Helldivers 2. After 200 hours and many, many dives across difficulties 7 to 9, these are the things I learned which most transformed my performance. So, what do we mean by endgame? Well, in the present state, that means difficulties 7 to 9 covering all mission types against both Terminids and Automatons. Let's get straight into it. We want to build from the ground up. This means that if you're a PC player, you need to customize your controls so that maneuvering through the game feels like an extension of your body. This will be the number one absolutely most critical thing you do to transform how fluidly you play Helldivers 2. This completely changed the game for me. Because there is so little time to think in difficulties 8 and 9, your control schema has to be absolutely perfect in order to fluidly traverse the battlefield and deal with the many, many challenges the game will throw at you. While I can't get the controls perfectly customized to your preferences, I will show you exactly what I've done on my side to make this game feel more like playing Quake 3 Arena, Unreal Tournament, or Tribes. Essentially that beautiful, effortless, high skill ceiling extension of your body that tournament shooters of yesteryear demanded. Open your options and let's get tweaking. Set Remember Aim Mode to Per Weapon. Remember Weapon Functions to Yes. Switch Weapon on Pickup to No. Now, the big one here is to enable dynamic aim mode. This is a game changer that allows you to quickly snap in and out of first person ADS, which makes fighting the automatons that much easier. You no longer need to worry about manually switching between third and first person modes or messing around with switching which shoulder your camera is viewing over, which frees up two controls. Simply tap right click to snap to sights or hold right click to aim while maintaining third person view for greater awareness. If you make any of these changes, make sure that this is one of them. In the display options, ensure that camera shake strength is set to off. Trust me on this one, you're welcome. While you're there, make sure V-Sync is off so that you don't incur any unnecessary mouse lag. Over in the HUD options, make sure that reticle visibility and sample count visibility are both set to visible. Under mouse and keyboard is where we start to do the real magic. First, make sure that mouse smoothing is off and that mouse acceleration is on zero. We want to ensure minimum mouse lag and highest predictability with aiming. Now, jump to change bindings. Your preferences here may vary, but I'm going to show you the settings which completely transform the game for me. Set climb to hold spacebar. Set sprint to press shift. This gives your pinky finger a nice rest. Set dive to tap spacebar. This makes the spacebar a dual function control. You tap it to dive and hold it to climb. This saves you an additional key while being extremely logical. Down under stratagems, you can change up, down, left and right from WASD to the arrow keys on your keyboard. This allows you to call in stratagems while continuing to move. Currently, I still have them bound to WASD due to muscle memory, but I'd suggest learning the other way. Over in the combat settings, set reload to one of your furthest mouse thumb buttons and quick grenade to the mouse wheel button. Quick Stim set to Q, Primary Weapon set to Mouse Wheel Up, Secondary Weapon set to Mouse Wheel Down, and Support Weapon set to your nearest side mouse thumb button. Weapon switching, reloading, and jumping in and out of first person view is now effortless. Get used to this and you will dominate. Weapon Wheel Up, Down, Left and Right to the arrow keys on your keyboard. Under Communication, set Mark to Tap F, and Open Comms Wheel to Long Press F. And there you have it, finally done. Your controls are now set up like a pro. Feel free to play around with them and customize them to your own exact preferences. If you're finding the tips valuable so far, feel free to join us as a subscriber because there is a heap more Helldivers 2 content coming. I'm going to cover the meta behind the upcoming releases, such as the impending mech stratagems, not to mention the value of the monthly War Bonds trees being released every second Thursday of the month. I will give you the play-by-play -play of what melts the endgame. The next step is to bring the ideal loadout for each species and mission type. While we can't cover absolutely all permutations of them here, I can give you some great starting points to get you on your way. Currently, armor rating is broken, so the best armors are all light class. I like the Legionnaire armor, which fortifies your limbs and allows you to throw 30% further. This can be invaluable when trying to land tricky airstrikes. You can purchase this one on rotation in the Superstore. For primary weapons, it's difficult to beat the Breaker or Incendiary Breaker for Terminates. For the Automatons, the Slugger and Scorcher are currently the play. 
I've also seen some players do decent work with the scythe against automaton weak spots, so feel free to experiment and find your ideal primary. In the secondary slot, I always like the Uzi for an immense dose of burst damage, which can get you out of some very tricky situations alive. The grenade, it really depends on what you prefer. I like zoning, so I always run the incendiary grenade. How about a nice cup of liver tea? Get wrecked. Boosters are very straightforward. Stamina Enhancement is easily the best booster in the game, followed by increased reinforcement budget if you're planning on doing hell dives. For planets with tricky terrain, such as jungles and arctic tundra, Muscle Enhancement is super handy, as it will allow you to get through deep snow, mud, and shrubbery more quickly. The fourth slot is a wild card, but it's hard to go wrong with Vitality Enhancement or flexible reinforcement budget if you're planning on getting super sweaty. When it comes to stratagems, for fighting the Terminids, a great starting point is the laser drone, especially if you're a solo or duo player. The drone will keep you alive, melting adds and freeing you up for more important things, such as shooting those five charges coming at you from all directions in difficulty 8 and above. Because the drone takes up a backpack slot, this makes the railgun the natural support weapon. Not only can it kill every single Terminid unit, including Bile Titans, it also doesn't require a backpack to house its ammo. Now, you've got your adds under control, and you're able to take down anything if it comes down to it. The Gatling Sentry is almost mandatory for crowd control against Terminids. This thing basically ensures you'll get the highest kill count at the end of the mission. Just make sure to keep charges away from it, as they will rush it the moment it begins firing. Lastly, an airstrike for utility is a great idea. I absolutely love the cluster bomb strike for Terminids because of its coverage area and sheer lethality. It also looks hilarious sending bug bits flying sky high. Just bear in mind that, one, you can massacre your entire team with it if you're not careful, and two, it likely won't take down any bile titans or even charges for you. So balance out your choice depending on the mission type. If you're expecting to be dealing with a ton of bile titans, you may want to bring the 500 kilo bomb strike instead. For holdout missions, you want mortars regular mortar emplacements as well as EMS. Then your Gatling and autocannon sentries can mince the enemies after they're zoned on their own spawn points. For the automatons, the meta changes slightly. Because the automatons engage from range, there's much more of a focus on movement and cover. To that end, the best backpack and slot for them is the personal shield pack. This will suck up a few hits before going down, allowing you to keep firing without being staggered, or giving you the extra breathing room required to execute a... Uh, strategic retreat. Like the drone pack, the shield pack pairs perfectly with the railgun. The railgun can also take down any automaton unit in the game, and can even do the hulks in a single shot through the eye hole, which makes it a great utility support weapon. Mortars are amazing for assaulting automaton positions. You want to make sure your party is running with at least one mortar and at least one EMS mortar on most mission types where you're assaulting, much more when you're doing defensive holdouts. The automaton defense missions can be AFK'd if the entire party simply maxes out on mortars and autocannon sentries. Supplement this with an orbital laser strike to make short work of automaton outposts. The great thing about this call-in is that it will intelligently track targets to make sure you get the maximum impact from it. It can take out tanks, buildings, turrets, you name it. Now, you may end up in a position where you have to weigh up mortars versus an airstrike stratagem. I tend to like the basic Eagle airstrike against automatons because of its versatility. It can take out units, tanks, and buildings. You may prefer cluster for crowd control or 500 kilo bombs for more punch against tanks. It really depends on what the mission calls for. The Fabricator Assault missions can also benefit from one person bringing walking barrage orbital strikes to take out bases while continuing to move. As always, it's a balancing act. Decide whether you need to ditch your mortar or one of the airstrikes in order to accommodate this. And here's one final tip before we move on. Always overclock your railgun. What does that mean? Hold the reload key until you see the weapon menu pop up and set the railgun to unsafe. You currently have to do this for every new railgun you pick up manually. On the default mode, you can only cook the railgun halfway. Once it's unlocked, you'll be able to juice it right up to the point where it turns you into a puff of red mist. Pro tip, shoot before it does that. The gameplay loop of Helldivers 2 consists of landing in a mission area and clearing your objectives as quickly as possible. 
The longer you stay in mission, the more numerous the enemies will become and the more difficult it will be to extract. Because you don't get absolutely any reward for increasing your kill count, there is no need to engage enemy patrols unnecessarily. It's crazy how many people I see, even in high difficulty games, who don't seem to understand this. Unless there's a reason to engage a group of enemies, don't do it. You'll simply get stuck in a reinforcement loop where terminids will create breaches and automatons will call in reinforcements. These get absolutely brutal during hell dives, and you don't want to be wasting your ammo dealing with the hordes. If you get bogged down fighting an enemy group, bring down overwhelming force to shut them down. The last thing you want is to get stuck in a reinforcement loop. Annihilate the enemy as soon as they land and then get back to your objectives. In a perfect scenario, when you're assaulting a position, you want to make sure to shut down all the enemies in the given group simultaneously so that they don't signal for reinforcements. The automatons, this means shutting down all the foot soldier units first, especially the commissars. For the terminids, unfortunately multiple units can spew and cause a breach, so you really need to make sure that you're thorough and quick. It's extremely easy to get overwhelmed with reinforcements on difficulties 8 and above. Hope you enjoyed the tips. Let me know how you go crushing those Helldives, subscribe for much more Helldivers 2 coverage, and I'll see you next time.